What's up guys, Baker here. Um, this is the OCE breakdown of Stamps 540 Wall Bang Part 3, I believe. Um, it's been a couple days since I got to record Part 2, but uh, just fitting one in here, okay. Um, so I left you off with the cinematic, and uh, this is what we got so far, RAM preview, real quick. Just some element and form and stuff. So the logos are switching as it's spinning really fast, and we got some form. And I remembered how I audio synced it. So we'll go to the form real quick. Close this off. We'll go to audio react. And um, it was disperse, but it was not left to right. It was outwards. And let's see. Does it work now? What the hell? It worked in... This is embarrassing. So we got that reactor disperse outwards. Why is it not working? Cut forward. Huh. Inter interesting. Maybe threshold? Maybe not. Anyways, okay, we'll forget about that again then. So, I also had some uh, particles, so I'll make a new solid. Rename this to particles. Just gonna use some uh, particular stuff. Very good. Plug in for particles. And uh, let me solo this and my uh, form so I can see those things. So the emitter, I'll bring to zero, zero and see where that is over here. Okay, so maybe a little bit higher, maybe to the left a little bit more. And I want to make this a, uh, a box emitter so that I can spread out the size of the box in the X direction, Y direction just a little bit. And I don't want it to be under the form, so I'm going to bring this up and to the left. And also, I don't want to get any weird parallax with um, the element. I don't want the particles to look like they're behind it. So when I stretch the Z space, I need to bring this back forward so it's not like, you know, really far back there and um, behind the element. Otherwise, I'd have to do masking and then uh, it gets kind of gross and stuff. So. Uh, velocity, turn that down to maybe like 5. I want these particles to be relatively still. Um, they are growing on, so what we can do is go in the beginning, do the uh, particles per second, keyframe it, and let's make this a little bit bigger, like uh, 2000. Go forward just a few frames, and go down to 0, and just take this layer, and just slide it, the keyframes, before your uh, comp starts. So everything is on and turned on and we might need to change the uh, life a little bit longer three seconds we'll make it ten seconds so everything stays on nothing dies and we got some floating particles and um, I added a little bit of star glow so I'm just gonna copy the form of star glow I'm actually gonna make this a little not a little less uh, dark blue maybe a lighter blue to match my color correction Maybe closer to that and uh, same for this one a little lighter come on boy there we go so I'm just gonna take the star glow copy it put it on the uh, particular layer and it didn't copy let's try that again close copy paste there we go so we got some pretty particles and stuff and um, yeah, that was basically, if I unsolo this, that was basically my uh, opening cinematic and stuff right there. Um, next, I want to do, let's see, the guy dying. Let's take a look at this. So, Stamina sent me the cinematic. Um, problems with this is the little ki kill feed over here. Terrible kill feed. I don't want that. And I also don't want to crop the whole thing because then you lose you know, uh, more pixels and um, stuff like that. So you want to have a still camera for this trick and Stam actually kind of moved it a little bit right here, but that's okay. What we're gonna do is go before when we have a uh, pretty much a blank slate, we're gonna duplicate and right click and freeze frame this guy and just rename this to blank slate. So I'm just going to go ahead and mask, you know, this area right here where the kill feed pops up. Uh, yeah. 
And um, what I'm going to do is push P and S, I believe. So I'm going to go, when the camera starts moving, right about here. So this last frame. Keyframe the position and the scale. Go to the end when the camera stops moving. When he turns right around here. There. I'm just going to scale this down. So let me move the anchor point. So take your pan behind tool and this little sun looking thing. Take your anchor point and just move it. Okay, unkeyframe the position. First move your anchor point. Okay, we got that. Now we're going to keyframe the position and the scale at that one frame. Go forward until the camera stops. And we are going to scale this down and try to fit it back where it was. So maybe 97. Like that. Now our mask needs to be a little bit longer so we can do that. See, the lines aren't perfectly matching up. So I'm going to scale it down a little bit more. 96 and slide into place and 95 Let's try that it's close, might need some uh, rotation in there also but just feather the mask about 3 pixels or something and um, maybe an intermediate keyframe but for the most part this kill feed is covered up and um, looks a lot better I also added a easter egg text on this picture with this weird looking stretchy girl um, it said, holy shit, that was awesome. So we're going to make a new composition. Call this, holy shit, that was, ooh, holy shit, that was awesome. Okay. And, okay. And I'm just going to make a new solid. We'll make it uh, white and hit OK. And go ahead and take a rounded rectangle tool and just uh, mask somewhere in the middle that we can uh, move the vat the mask up so double click center it okay and I'm gonna make some text here holy let's make this black too so we can see it you know you know I like babas 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 I never know what that how you pronounce it holy shit that was awesome totally totes my goats Alright, so we got that, and um, I'm also going to draw in a little speech bubble thingy, so let's see, how would that look? Maybe like, um, draw it like this, and like that, and like that, simple enough. Okay, so close the mask, so now we got this thing, and fix the point a little bit so it's smoother. Okay, that, that was close enough, looks cool to me. So the trick to make this look... Uh, like it's on the thingy kind of did a tut on this long time ago where is it here so we're gonna bring in that holy shit that was awesome over a blank slate and all that we're going to find corner pin drag that on now just take these corners and just uh, put them where you think the corners of the billboard would be so maybe here and this one would go definitely right there and this bottom right one right yeah, and this one right. Yeah, and now it doesn't, uh, you know, look like like her shoulders talking. Like, what's up with that? So what we can do is go into here and make a null object and um, parent both of these guys to the null object. I'm going to push P and Shift S so we can get the position and the scale. And um, we'll just move this over here and scale it a little bit and move it over. And then we can just go back and check. Does it look like she's talking? Yeah, it's pretty good. It might need to be a little bit bigger so we can read it better. So let's go back in here and make this bigger. A little bit more. And let's see what that looks like. Pretty good. So that was basically all I put in here. There wasn't, uh, I didn't. Put, do anything besides Twister sinking when he falls and he's so dead and stuff. He did. Um, yeah. So back to our main comp. Let's see what we got here. So we got our unedited clip. We got um, the forward cinematic. Remember, this was synced up to the 
song because we had a duplicate song in here. So we're going to mute that so it doesn't uh, blast our eardrums. And then, um, let's see, this just came in and I had some a uh, little bit of Twixter syncing going on here. So what I'm going to do first, let's see, let me think about this. Um, first, let me sync it to the drop, which I think is right here. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to move the guy dying out of the way. And then the use clip, I'm going to move this over and find when he shoots the guy. Right about now. All right. So, hmm. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's okay. And I'm just going to duplicate this a whole bunch of times. I don't know how many yet. But um, the main one I'm going to trim whenever. And um, I'm going to apply Twixter to all these, basically. And first... No, it's okay. Let's add some Twixter to... Let's do this bottom layer. So I'm going to unsolo all these guys. And that's mute all these clips and the raw clip and the use clip. Pretty much every clip you're going to have muted because we're going to import our own gun sounds. So I'm going to look at this clip by itself and we get some gross warping. You see that? Hmm, how can we fix that? Oh, frame rate. Boom! We're done. No, I'm just kidding. So I want some uh, Twixter in the beginning. So I'm going to look for a random frame I just want to Twixter at so maybe right here when he's running yeah I'll do that right there okay keyframe keyframe one percent for me so it's all slow-mo the whole time trim it maybe just a little bit for those couple frames that didn't have Twixter on it and um, I'm gonna leave that where it is right now I'm going to unsolo and look at the next guy. Again, add some Tweakster. 59.94. Find a new frame to Twixter at. I think it was when he was turning the corner. Right around here. I don't want I don't want a Twixter when the gun is moving a lot or when he is turning. That's when you get the really, really bad warping. So Gotta avoid that. So again, 1% and slow motion warping on the left side, but yeah, it's okay. And trim before the Twixter. Alright. Next guy, let's see. Let's count how many uh, Twixters we need. So we need um, one for this 1, 2, 3. And we need 1, 2, 3, maybe 3 or 4. So next clip, unsolo Twixter. 59.9. I'll also, before my timer runs out, let's see how much time I have left. Check my timer. One minute, 30 seconds. I'll show you my um, Twixter settings. A lot of people ask for that all the time, and um, it's surprising. But, anyways, so I, I want when he, his gun is going like that. So, um, keyframe, move forward, 1%. Yeah, it's a little bit of warping, so let me move that over a couple frames. One, two. How's that look? Still warping, but, you know, that's video games for you. Anyways, before I finish, um, I'll do the twixtering uh, while I'm not recording because that might be a little bit boring for you. But I um, just wanted to show you, you know, every single thing I did on this edit in in real time so you know you know what's going on and stuff so anyways let me do my twixter real quick um, what I like or not twixter uh, motion blur so let me go to my regular clip this guy a regular clip so what I like to do is real smart motion blur and I like the sensitivity all the way up but then the blur amount a little bit down so I like it about 0.4 or 0.3 depending on what the clip is. I don't like it too blurry. But um, what I do want to mention is I've noticed if you render and you go to OK Timer, I get it. 
when you go to lossless, no, when you don't go to lossless, when you go to best settings and you do this frame rate down here, some people export at uh, 30 frames per second, 29.97, to make your file size smaller because YouTube um, uses 30 frames per second. I actually render at 59 because I've noticed the real smart motion blur um, samples from you know all 60 frames or whatever as opposed to the frames that are more spread apart so the real smart motion blur is smoother when you render at 59.94 and then you're just gonna have to hand break it to get your file size smaller but um, yeah if you're gonna plan on using real smart motion blur and you want it really smooth you're gonna have to render in 59 if you want it to look really really good and that's my settings for that and um, I'm gonna stop now so uh, you don't get too bored and um, yeah I'll finish this up and then uh, see you next time thanks oh and like the video and favorite and comment and Facebook and Twitter and t-shirts and yeah okay bye